Hey fellow guys, I'm currently working on a 2011 Dodge 2500 Hemi um, with the 5.7 in it. Um, never done anything like this before. You know, at home repair, just trying to get it done. I've, I've searched a lot of videos online to find out, um, you know, a lot of the information on timing and removing the heads and getting the valve covers and, and breaking down the whole motor with the oil pan and everything else that needs to come out of here. Um, a lot of great information out there. The only thing I had a problem with was finding information on setting my timing. Um, I've got my Heinz book, uh, you know, manual to look at it. I finally figured out what I was doing and I thought, well, maybe I'd put something together to, to help you guys out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go under here, show you the three marks we're looking for and how to rotate the engine around to, to get everything to line up. You need your timing mark on your crankshaft at the 6 o'clock position. You need the timing mark on your camshaft at the 12 o'clock position. And the keyhole on the crankshaft needs to be looked at the 2 o'clock position. Uh, sounds real complicated, sounds tough, but it's actually a very, very simple concept once, it, once you figure it out. The real trick is you've got to rotate the engine a lot in order to get it to go. You probably got to rotate your crank yeah, 30 times, you know, in order to get it to line up. So again, I'm going to go under there. I've got my beautiful wife up there recording me doing the job, um, but I'm going to rotate it around and see if we can figure this thing out. So good luck with everything. So if you notice here on the chain, you've got these two little marks that are right there on those two links. Those are the two links that need to straddle the mark that is right here on the sprocket. It's kind of tough to see, but there is a mark on that sprocket that should straddle right underneath there. Um, right here, this little indention, if you would, let me see that. This little indention. Hold on, my wife zoomed me in and jacked me up. That little indention right there on your camshaft, on your crankshaft, I mean, that's your keyhole. That's supposed to be at 2 o'clock. Right here on the bottom, you've got, let me turn off the headlight. You've got a mark, you see the chain with the single link? That's what's supposed to be at your 6 o'clock position. And then you've got this little metal indention. Hard to see it, but if you look close, there's a metal indention on that crank, on the crank sprocket. That metal indention needs to line up with the single link at 6 o'clock, your keyhole right here at 2 o'clock, and then up top, I can't see it, but if you can get in really close right here, Joe, as close as you can, stand on the ladder if you need but these two marks here on the chain need to line up. So what I'm going to do is I went a little past 6 o'clock right now. I'm going to rotate all the way through until everything lines up. So all you do is you just rotate this motor. And it's going to take a while, you know. It's, it's going to take a little while. Um, you're going to pass it a handful of times thinking things aren't going to line up. But, you know, have no worries. Just keep cranking until, until it lines up. Now, you don't want any resistance here. If everything's in time, it, it should go through just fine. If you're if you're having to force it, stop. Something's wrong, and uh, you know maybe seek some other help. Again, I'm at a home. I'm a home mechanic. Never really done anything like this before. This is the first time I've ever tore it apart. I just wanted to save money from paying the dealership. I'm fairly mechanically inclined, and I thought I would give it a shot. And uh, you know, for the most part, things have been going great. The YouTube world has a lot of information on it, and take the time to educate yourself and research and you're going to be just fine. So again, you can see how much I'm cranking. Right now I've got the single link down here. If you can look at that, Joe, there's the single link. You can see that it's not even close to where where the dial or the dot on the cam or the crankshaft is. It's actually right there is where the the timing dot is. So I've got my timing dot over here and I've got my chain link over here. Um, because of the way the gearing and everything works, you got to continue to rotate it until they line up. Again, it might take, you know, 30, 40 turns for this thing to come around. But as soon as it comes around, you've got to kind of watch it line up and keep your window uh, to get everything to stop at the 6 o'clock position and have everything where you need it. So again, you can just kind of watch it as it's coming around. You've got your, your 
link coming down, I just kind of keep an eye on it. And as it gets closer to my, my sprocket, still no timing mark. You can see that it's still not there. So I just continue to rotate. We're close. You can see here's my timing mark. And here's the crankshaft mark right there. So you can see that we're, we're one off now. We're closer than we were just a minute ago. Uh, but again, no worries. You just keep on cranking this thing through until it's there. There's the mark again. Nowhere close to the other mark. So again, I'm, uh, I'm just continuing to rotate. Hopefully I, you guys can understand what I'm saying. But So we're getting close. Slow it down. Still no timing mark, so continue to rotate this thing through. And I said, it seems like it takes a while, but take your time. It's gonna come. It's a little sprocket. It's gotta do a lot of rotations in order to line up with everything. As you can see, if you look, if she shows you the motor, you can see the, uh, the pistons kind of going in and out and everything kind of working. Again, you want to keep your motor clean. We're getting close. Still no timing mark. So continue to keep it going. We're almost there. No timing mark. There's a... Okay, let's see if we're getting any closer. Still no cigar. Maybe one more pass, maybe two more passes. And uh, that timing mark's going to line up with where we're at. Okay, so again, you can see the, the marked link coming down. And I think we're going to be close. Oh, look, see, we're off only right now by, by about one link. So that tells me we're close. We're going to do one more rotation, and it should line up with where we want it. You got anything to add to the camera, Jill? No. Okay, so here, here comes the link again. Okay, so have no worries. We're going around. Round and round we go. Where we stop, no one knows. But you know, when I started this, I was worried. Like I didn't want to over crank. I didn't know how long to take. And you know, I, I stuck with it and, and it kind of worked itself out. Oh, <coughs> so close. <coughs> Look at that, so close. <laughs> Well, you gotta be able to see it. Yeah. Does it help? The glare. Can you see it at all, or is it glaring? Yeah, it's glaring. Right there. Can you see the mark, though? No. That's what I mean. I gotta shine it a little. Oh, right there. So you can see how close we're getting. Here's the mark, the timing mark. There's my timing link. So every time I go around, it takes this sprocket going around like three or four times in order to to make the the transition. But you know, I gotta keep with it. Keep going and, it, and it's continually getting closer. So we're just going to keep on with it. And every time that thing comes down, the, the single marked chain, we're going to keep an eye on it. See, no mark right now because it's out of rotation. So don't worry, just keep that chain, keep that chain rolling. There goes the two marks. Those got to be up top and they will be once we line up the six as long as your truck is in time to start um, as long as you get this single mark chain on your sprocket everything else is going to just fall into place so it's still not there like i said it takes two or three rotations for everything to to line up so you can see why the guys are explaining this timing it's it's just a kind of a pain in the butt but if you take your time, you're going to figure it out. All right, so here we go. Look, it, we're, we're right on track now. Well, we're still off just a hair, so we keep it going. I 
Are those pistons still moving all right? You don't see any obstructions up there? shot past it or something, I don't know. How much time's gone by on this video? I don't want to make it forever. 11 minutes. And my arm is tiring out, people, if you're wondering. Okay. Okay, I think we're here. So check it out. It took forever, but finally it lined up. We've got the single mark and we got the timing mark. So hopefully you could see that. Jill, can you get in on that really, really good? Climb up on that. I am. I you can see it in the video real well. Turn your head a little. Not too glare. Not too much glare. Right there. Right there? Right there. But look at that. They lined up perfectly where that little glare. dot. Glare. Glare. Can I see my phone? So I can zoom out. I want to show it really well so they can see. I'm sorry for all the talking, guys, but you know I had a lot of problems finding information on this, and I, I really wanted to show you guys how it's supposed to be, or how I think it's supposed to be. But look at that. There's the dot lined up with the link. Now that needs to go down to the six o'clock. So I'm going to rotate it slowly. Hang on, fellas. It's a little tight under the truck. You know, I'm, like I said, at home, working on it the best I can in my garage. I've got a two-car tandem with a, the third bay is kind of where I keep my workshop. But I need you to shine lower, hun, so I can see exactly where I'm coming from. So you can see it approaching the 6 o'clock. Take your time because if you overshoot your mark, you're you're going to be going around a lot, <laughs> you know, to, to get it to line up. But again, the timing chain mark, the single mark, the indention on the camshaft sprocket, and I've got my keyhole right here at two o'clock. This big nut that's in the way is just uh, you know, the crankshaft bolt. I don't want to loosen it up because everything's where I need it right now. But there's my. My six o'clock, my two o'clock, and if she takes it up top, take the phone, babe. You can see the two chains here should be directly centered over an indention on the sprocket. Do you see that, Jill? I don't see that. Well, if it's not there, we're in trouble. Oh, I see it, yeah. Let me get in there real quick, please. It's right there. Let me get in there. Sorry, fellas, I'm going to climb in there and get you a close shot. I took my radiator and everything out per the manual. And on these bigger trucks, it's, it's kind of nice because there's a lot of room to really get in this motor and engine bay and work on everything, but you just want to be careful. So... Look, this is the top. This is my uh, my camshaft. So I've got my two marks 
my two marked chains directly above that mark on your sprocket. And that is how you get your car in time. So right now, my motor is in top dead center, uh, which means after, after countless hours of research, which means after countless hours of research, that the number one cylinder is in the top position there. And that's top dead center. Um, again, it took me a long time to figure out, you know, probably about a week and a half of research uh, because I didn't want to mess up my truck. You know, I wanted to take my time, <laughs> no pun intended, take my time, uh, in order to figure this out. Um, what I've got going on is I've got a bad lifter. Um, it's an exhaust lifter that I'm taking out and I'm, I'm putting in. So again, my truck right now is in TDC. So fellas, when you're cranking through, um, it takes a while, but take your time, continue to crank, and, and it's going to line up as long as your truck is in time to start. You know, everything's going to line up and it's going to be done right. Um, so that's that. Hopefully that will help you guys in dialing in your timing. The next step is this tensioner right there, the big plastic part. I've got to squeeze it with a pair of channel locks. This hole here... see but this hole right here is going to get compressed until it lines up with this hole and then I'm putting a drill bit through there or a, in my case I'm going to use a, a hole punch a small one it's going to hold that tensioner back it's going to loosen this chain and I'm going to be able to take this stuff apart once I get this camshaft bolt out of there now once you are in perfect time you're going to want to use a, a breaker bar on the bottom to hold the crank from moving and, you know, loosen up the other bolts. So take your time, get in good position, and do it. What I've got going over here is my uh, garage. But you can see here, I've got my heads out. Everything's labeled really well, you know, with bolts. And I use these styrofoam things to kind of keep everything in line with the, you know, water pumps, alternators, fuel rails, coil packs, intake, uh, dampener over here the same thing I've got a uh, you know the head bolts which I'm replacing in mine hopefully you guys do the same I took the time to take all my uh, push rods out and, and keep them in order I've got the rocker arms down underneath a lot of assembly oil when you put this back together you got your your rails or your your lifters that came out of here um, you know that was mine here I tried to replace it and I didn't do it right the first time so I'm I'm doing it again, but hopefully the information helps you guys. Here's the oil pump. Let me show you what the bad lifter looked like so you can kind of see. All this work is being done to replace this lifter. You can see how it's wore out, it's busted up, and and that's that so anyways have a good day guys my first and only video and i, and I hope it helps you thanks bye